You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means it is time once again for your bi-weekly options extravaganza known as the Option Block. My name is Mark Longo. I will be your host, your guide, your mater d'. I will lead you to your table here for the one-hour-long options feast. <laughs> that is the old OB. Glad to see so many of you are having fun in the old secret club. If you want to learn more, kick the tires for yourselves. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. If you're on the after the fact, like a lot of our listeners are hanging out on whatever device of choice, a, glad you're having a good time. B, make sure you keep rating and reviewing because it does help all the legion of new folks out there continue to discover the content. And, of course, keep those questions and comments coming, particularly for a day like today. It is Mail Block Thursday, after all. We'll see how many of you folks we could squeeze here onto the program. And joining me on said program, let's go back out to the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. By way of the magical land of Austin, Mr. Meatball, welcome back to the program, sir. Hey, good to be here. I'm excited. Uh, quite the day we've had today so far, and I'm ex- I'm really looking forward to discussing it. You know, I get a briefing every morning when I wake up, so that's my alarm from my smart speaker, and it has a variety of news sources aggregated in it. It kind of runs through them as I wake up to the world. And the first story I was greeted with this morning Mr. Meatball was a story out of the journal about how the average home in Austin is going for about a hundred grand above the offer price, sir. <laughs> above the asking price. <laughs> yeah, no, things are pretty nice for homeowners here in Austin right now. It's not a bad place to be if you uh, own a home. You had good timing on that trade, sir. Congratulations. I did. Get out did. now while the getting is good. <laughs> That'd be something. I'm sure your family would love you if you hit the bid and got the heck out of Dodge right now. Yeah, no, that would be I, I, that would be interesting, to say the least, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> that would be interesting indeed. Let's go out now to another part of the country. I'm not sure if things are quite that robust there, but we shall find out. It is, of course, St. Charles, where we are joined once again by the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the program. How much through the asking price are things trading for in St. Charles these days? We never know because nobody ever wants to leave. So it's, it's kind of hard for us to judge that. So but uh, it's good to be here as always. That's true. You do have quite the supply restriction over there in St. Charles. I think you have to get on a waiting list if you want to move in, right? I don't know. No one's ever left. So I don't know how to answer that. Why would anybody ever leave? It is the magical paradise known as as St. Charles. I guess we'll have to just make do then with the trading block. 
It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Trading Block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading? What is lighting up our tapes today? Indeed has been popping off on our screens throughout the week. And like we said on Monday, kind of a bit of a weird one. On Monday's show, we were kind of lamenting the the lack, really, of follow-through and any sort of vol pop and any sort of real sell-off. We saw something similar happen through the early part of Tuesday. Then we saw a little bit of the sell-off actually kick in and the vol pop uh, kicking in. Then we kind of got a little more of a taste of it <laughs> uh, yesterday with uh, the Fed coming out for a little bit more spookage to reuse my favorite phrase out there, talking about maybe starting to taper a bit again. And that put markets on edge and that sent things into a tailspin. We got VIX up to north of 23, 23.15 out there was the high out there. Coming into the show right now, we're hovering a little bit north of 20 and a half. <laughs> so about 20.65 or so. Puts it up a little over four points from where it was this time last show. So anybody who had a 20 handle, in the crystal ball, which I do know there were a few of our listeners out there, probably more than a few, actually, who were feeling a little more vol on the screen this week. And of course, if you look at our poll from the week before, you guys were all over the place. A lot of you were north of the 19 level, I think about 25 percent of you. So it is interesting to see now all those different vol prognostications. You could They all got hit pretty much over the course of the past week. We had a 16 handle all the way up to a 23 handle this week. So interesting times we are all living in collectively. Uh, VVIX coming into showtimes at about a 128. That puts it up about, oh, 13 points. By the way, the markets today, after trending in one direction uh, yesterday, this today kind of doing another one of those kind of which way will they go type of days the dow off nearly two tenths of a percent the s&p up about two tenths of a percent and the nasdaq up about a third of a percent so that sets the stage for the broad markets and of course our old friend vxx uh, the product you folks like to fade not exactly fading this week up to about 29 and a quarter puts it up about two and a half points from where it was on monday's show and vol q aka the at the money vol of the nasdaq 100 at about a 19 19 and a quarter or so puts it up about four and a quarter points from where it was this time last show. So NASDAQ ball getting a little juicy out there as well. Since we're talking ball, let's head out to the land of the meatball. Mr. Meatball, sir, a lot of interesting stuff popping off on the ball front this week, sir. Yeah, ball kind of blew up. Um, we saw the, the VIX futures go backward briefly relative to the cash. So the cash was trading above uh, the future, but that has since recited as the uh, market has started, decided it wanted to recover midday. Uh, and as a whole, the, this market has absolutely gone, uh, gone a little bananas the last few days and, uh, real right, just in time for regular expiration, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was a weird one this week. I do have some listener questions about that later. We'll get to it, but it was a weird one from a ball perspective. You kind of had to, for this week's expiration, you kind of, for ball at least, you really had to hold it through till the end <laughs> to get the, uh, the big pop, which is of course something we don't really advocate too often. And. Usually you have to take that stuff off. In fact, if you didn't get your stuff off, if you had some ball upside, for example, if you didn't get it off in the latter portion of Tuesday's session, then you kind of missed the boat. And so it was it was definitely a weird one this week. I think we'll get into that more probably as the show unfolds. Let's go out now to the land where no one leaves, a.k.a. St. Charles. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, not quite an Uncle Mike type of day, and it's kind of been a hit or miss Uncle Mike type of week. What's been lighting up your tape, sir? Well, I think it, it was really a non Uncle Uncle Mike type of day uh, overnight. I was just uh, I remember just getting up in the morning and looking at the futures from overnight, and we were getting shellacked. And so now we've had roughly a sixty point move in the S and P futures from the low until right now. It's uh, the rally started happening. Uh, shortly before the market opened, uh, but we have really had quite the rally if you look at it now in terms of what's uh, going on for the day then of course we're up 10 points so maybe um two tenths of a percent something like that just depending on uh, where we're at right at this moment but uh primarily what's really uh pushing this market in terms of the sectors is a lot of this is coming from the tech area and we're and when i say a lot of it the tech area is up over one percent on the day um, i'm referring to xlk the tech sector etf 
And then the rest of the market's really not doing a whole heck of a lot. And so we're definitely getting a rally in the sector that's actually pushing us higher. Uh, for a while there, earlier in the morning, we also had uh, the VIX actually touching the 24 handle. So uh, it's like I tweeted out, somebody was scared of something at some point. And um, uh, a lot of people really felt like, oh, this is the big one. We're going down. And then uh, I think that uh, what really, what I, I, you know, it's kind of scary. But uh, what I thought about this morning was at around maybe 5 30 in the morning when i was looking at the futures when i got up i was just sitting there thinking you know what uh i was thinking of mark sebastian and what i was thinking of is that well we've had a we, we've had high vol and that means people already in i mean i'm oversimplifying this but that means people own their puts so the second wave if you will of a sell-off is probably won't happen because we already had higher vol and so it didn't. Sure enough, Sebastian was right uh, without him even trying to be right or even knowing that he said anything. <laughs> so those are, that's what I thought about earlier in the morning today. And just with other things that we have going on uh, right now, we do have a little bit of a down day in my beloved silver. Not a lot of movement there. And uh, the 10-year note, we are rallying in the bond space. Uh, so we're getting to the higher end of the range right now on uh, IEF, uh, what I track uh, pretty closely. And so we'll see where we go. But uh, definitely a fascinating day to just watch the three-minute price bars, that's for sure. Mr. Meatball, how do you feel that you are the first thing on Uncle Mike's brain when he wakes up in the morning, sir? I would expect no less. And I am I just assumed that I was the first thing on your mind as well in the morning. <laughs> today, <laughs> today, ironically, you were because my smart, smart speaker made it so. So there you go. You're two for two today. So you should have a warm. You, you should have a warm fuzzy today. <laughs> All right, before before he blow his head up anymore, let's keep on rolling on out. See what's blowing up in the broad market. And yeah, it's got some paper lighting it up out there today, listeners. Doesn't matter where you're looking. Large indexes, single names, they're all kind of lighting it up today. Let's go on out to Vixland first. And it's interesting, kind of a tale of two numbers. The ADV out there right now is four hundred and three thousand. That's down fifty thousand. From Monday. <laughs> so that's come off quite a bit. But we got some numbers on the tape today. 477,000 already on the tape as of a few minutes ago. So I got a feeling that ADB is going to be ticking back up in the other direction today. So VIX putting up some paper, as you probably would expect, given the range it's had just over the last couple of sessions. Spy, similar numbers. It's it's really lighting the doors on fire there. Three and a half million contracts already uh, the ADV is about 3.9 million. So, yeah, it's probably going to hit that today. S, closing in on a million contracts. Well, you know when the S is closing in on a million that already this time of day, that's something, something's up, something's trading. Uh, ADV is about one and a quarter million or so out there. The Q is already north of a million, 1.05 million. The ADV is a little bit shy of 1.3 million out there. And even small caps. Small caps getting in on the action, IWM at least, looking at 672,000 contracts. The ADV is a little bit shy of 650 out there. If you want a full small cap breakdown, we'll get to that a little bit later on Twifo Talk, the futures options, the skew, all that good stuff, and a whole bunch more with the legend himself, Mr. Dan Gramsler. So that should be a fun time. Stay tuned for that. Probably got some energy to talk about out there as well. Just spoiler alert, <laughs> excuse me, a little bit of action out there, a little bit of ball out there in the energy land. Speaking of vol and action, let's see what's going on in the single name part of the market out here. Cost you a robust 302,000 contracts to break into the top 10 today. That's that's no joke. That's almost 2x what it is on a usually quiet day, around 150,000. That gets you to AMC, 302,000 contracts. Number nine, we've got Microsoft still clinging in there to the top 10, 323 thousand contracts number eight palantir palantir has kind of been a just a perennial top tenor over the last week ever since their earnings they're really just lighting it up out there from an overall options perspective let's see what the stock is up to today it's up it's actually off about 20 cents it's up to right now about 2509 that's a decent level compared to where it's been just you know just yes just a few sessions ago it was trading in the 23 handle so i had a nice rally got up to looks like about t- almost 26 25 83 uh, on Wednesday session before getting clipped a little bit over there. Number seven, a name I got a feeling we're going to come back to. <laughs> this is Macy's. Man, 
putting up some biotech type numbers today. They had earnings today, and I it's like the market liked what they saw. The stock's up twenty one and a half percent, trading right around twenty two bucks. So it's up almost the same percentage as where the price is. It's about twenty one ninety seven. The stock's up about twenty one and a half percent. Up nearly four handles so far today. So nice little pop for them. I got a feeling, like I said, we're going to be coming back. To those bad boys. Number six, AMD, the other half of our symbol twin friends out there. AMD actually beat an AMC today, which is interesting. 427,000 contracts on the tape for number six for AMD. Number five, back out to China and Baba, 501,000. So number five, we're already north of half a million contracts. By 1,000, but still, it's enough to get us or north of the half a million level. Number four, yes, I said number four is Tesla. 514,000 uh, they've had some issues of late with these investigations into why their self-driving cars apparently are far too fond of emergency response vehicles. So uh, let's see the stock right now off about, oh, 10 handles today, one and a half percent, which again is about a rounding error for Tesla. And over the last few sessions, it's off a lot more, obviously. About la- end of last week on Friday, it was trading right around 727. So it's off a wee bit from those levels. Number three, it's Pfizer. Look at the headlines. You can see why names like Pfizer are still in our top 10 out there. Number two, it's NVIDIA. NVIDIA back in there in the top 10. By the way, Pfizer doing 550,000 contracts. And NVIDIA number two with 1.21 million contracts. It's up another nine handles or four, almost 5% just today. 199 and about a half is where it's hanging out right now. So just shy of the 200 handle looks like it beat it already today got up to over 204 204 and about a quarter before giving some of that back so quite the day out there for nvidia and this is the one that's had quite the year already it's already up 52 percent on the year was trading 131 back in the start of the year so this one's already had a nice run and uh, back up to some impressive levels even though it's shy of the level it hit it looks like a 52 week high was actually back in early July, right around July 6th, right around 209, close to it. So threatening to get back up to these levels after a little bit of a pullback, but still interesting stuff afoot out there. And NVIDIA, number two, 1.21 million. What could possibly be number one? Yeah, it's the fruit company. One and about a quarter million contracts on the tape. So Apple, even on a day when all these other ancillary things are on fire, putting up numbers across the board, Apple says, once again, hold my beer. Let me show you how it's done, kid. Apple's up about a buck today or a little over half, about two-thirds of a percent, trading a little bit north, I should say, of the 147 level, about 147 and a third. And again, good for one and a quarter million contracts. So a day that ends in Y, people have to sling some Apple. Let's see what they're slinging out there from an overall earnings perspective. And spoiler alert, maybe, just maybe, the war might be turning out there on earnings volatility front. Like we mentioned, this week has some interesting names, interesting assortment, really, of names popping off this week. Monday, Roblox. Tuesday, we had Walmart, Home Depot, and Krispy Kreme. (laughs) Wednesday, Target, Lowe's, NVIDIA, Cisco, and Robinhood. You may have heard of that one. And then today, Macy's, Kohl's, and BJ's. Tomorrow, we got John Deere and Foot Locker. We've got some earnings move, earnings move results, and earnings season reports for you. Hot off the presses from our friends over there at Orats right before showtime here. Listen, let's break down some of these bad boys for you. We had, uh, again, Macy's before the bell. (laughs) Spoiler alert, they outperformed. And they were already pricing in some juice. They were trading right around 18 bucks going into their announcement. They were pricing in nearly 10%, 9.9%. So that's pretty rich in this pandemic era for earnings vol. And yet they outperformed. They delivered 15.5%. And that's, of course, in the immediate earnings blush, if they waited a little bit, it's over 20%. So this thing has dramatically outperformed. And again, maybe... Maybe the worm is finally turning. When we look at the season numbers, we'll be able to tell that a little bit a little bit more definitively. Oh, Hood, a name you may have heard of. They went into their announcement just shy of 50 bucks, 49.80. They were pricing in 9.9%. So again, right up there with Macy's, just a tick under 10%. They delivered 9% in the wrong direction. Let's see where good old Hood is hanging out right now. But again, two names, one dramatically outperforming and one pretty close to it's uh, it's already pretty elaborate straddle. Yeah, it's still off about eight and a quarter percent today. So yeah, there was, I know there's some strong numbers out of them in terms of their crypto re- revenue out there, but apparently not enough to make the street happy. NVIDIA, like I said, also 
popping off this week. They were on the 18th after the bell. They traded 190 and about a half going into their announcement. They were pricing in 4.8%. And they, this is kind of more along the lines of what we expect, they delivered 4.3%. So, again, they've been squeezing the ball on all these names for some time. It's got to pop at some point, right? Uh, Cisco, cover your ears, Uncle Mike. They went into their announcement on the 18th after the bell. 55.15 is where they were trading. They priced in 380 and they delivered 2, two excuse me, 3.8%, and they delivered 2.8%. So, again, kind of more of what we expect from the cycle out here. It's got to BJ's, BJ's Wholesale Club out there. 51.93 is where they were trading. They were today before the bell. Let's see, they were pricing in 6%. They delivered 3.7%. So after getting all psyched up with Macy's and even a little bit with Hood there, it's like the other names are pretty much following the trajectory we've come to expect out there these days. Uh, let's look at the season. And we are starting to see a color out there that we haven't seen pretty much since the start of the pandemic. And that is green because the last couple of weeks, were actually outperformance weeks. And that's, again, a, a rarity in the pandemic era. In fact, it's so exciting. Matt was hitting me up right in the middle of the Option Block show on Monday saying, have you seen these numbers? Have you seen these numbers? Look, it's finally green. It's, it's finally coming back. So even Matt, the keeper of the data, is excited about this. We'll see if it's a long-term trend or if it's just kind of a, a blip. But right now, here's how the season is stacking up. Week one was 84%. So again, in the red. Week two Pretty bad, 59%. Week three, 70%. So three weeks there in the red, kind of what you expect these days. Then week four, 106%. So actually getting back some money on this deal. Number week five, 102%. So yeah, those two weeks looking pretty good so far this week at 72%. That brings the season as a whole in at 87%. So again, not quite green on the season, but a heck of a lot stronger than it has been. And those two weeks, again, they may still be adjusted, but those two weeks right now, holding out in the green. I can't remember the last time we saw a really green week here for earnings. So is the worm turning, listeners? I will leave it up to you to decide. Meanwhile, we still have some more names on the on the radar here, including tomorrow. We got John Deere before the bell. 65 and a half is where they're trading. They were pricing in, let's see, 384. In the past, they've moved 391. So... Pretty much right in line. They've gotten the memo out there. Foot Locker, let's see, 5371. They're pricing in 367. In the past, they've moved 379. So they've gotten the memo in Foot Locker as well. Uh, let's see here really quickly. Uh, some other ones that are popping off tomorrow. We've got AMAT after the bell today. They're at 127 and about a third as of this report. They're pricing in 488. In the past, they've moved 506. So no surprises really to be found out there. And we've also got into it after the bell today. Actually, they're on the 24th after the bell out there as well. They are, let's see, they're at 532.98, so pretty much 533. They were pricing in, oh, this is interesting, 1867. In the past, they've moved 1488 into it. Maybe looking for a little bit more vol out there. Perhaps not what I would have expected from a name like that. But there you go. You can check these out. For yourselves, listeners out there, you know where to go, theoptionsinsider.com. And then, of course, you can click on the earnings move, earnings move results, and earnings season report. Let's do one more. Let's go out to Dick's, Dick's Sporting Goods on the 25th before the bell next week. They're at 105.70. They're pricing in 809. In the past, they've moved exactly eight bucks. <laughs> so there you go. Another one that's pretty much right in line with the trend, if not kind of bucking it a little bit because they actually are pricing in a whopping nine cents of more vol. That's that's risky these days, but still intriguing stuff afoot. Speaking of intriguing stuff, listeners, let's get to some of it as we head on into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody. Let's do it. Let us unleash the Eye of Sauron and see where it fixes its steely gaze. 
today, listeners. And yeah, I mentioned we're going to come back to this one. It's kind of inescapable. It's Macy's. <laughs> Macy's putting up the numbers today. I mentioned they're up, oh, 21% so far. Actually, 22.5% now. It's moved even since the start of the show. So a good day for them, trading a little bit north of 22 now, 22.10. So getting a nice lift out there. In Macy's land on the year, they're up a whopping 239% for Macy's. Wow, that's that's an impressive level. You could have picked them up all you wanted this time last year for $6.52, listeners. Obviously, a bit of a reopen trade going on out there, but still, nonetheless, this name looking good. It kind of hovered in that six to seven and a half range. For looks like until pretty much November of last year, mid-November, then it started to move by, let's see, by just mid-December, December 9th, it got up to 1170 or so, kind of bounced around there for a while. Then it had a nice pop again in January, it went from 1230 all the way up in a couple of sessions to 1773. So this is a name that's had a few pops. You know, you might think Macy's sleepy clothing, you know, department store kind of retailer. But they have some moments of, of raw volatility here. Let's look at this charts. A 1230 to 1773 in the span of looks like that's about a few, just about three sessions or so. And then they sold off again right back down on February 2nd, trading 1370 again. So an aggressive little pop. They did it again in March, March 5th, went from 1512 all the way up to 2076. And that, that was in looks like about a couple of sessions as well. And then they they were sold off again by the end of March or back down to 1526. So they pretty much did a whole bunch of nothing <laughs> over the course of a few weeks, but a lot of vol being exhibited in that time frame. And they kept trending up again, got up to about 1960 or so on June 25th, sold off again by August 4th down to 1673. And then the last uh, couple of weeks have been pretty good for Macy's. It started rallying up again. August 11th got up to almost 20 bucks, 1981. Sold off a bit again down on August 18th, down to 1807. And then, of course, where we find ourselves today in the 19th, right back up again from 18 bucks, pretty much even all the way to 2215. So quite the quite the year it has been for a name that is otherwise pretty sleepy. Of course, this time a year ago, they were coming off, you know, we were coming off all the horrible riots and unrest here in the U.S. I know a lot of the Macy's stores got looted this time, so there's a reason why they were trading around the six-land handle on top of the pandemic. So there were a lot of other external factors at work. But let's see what our eye of Sauron found out here. Looks like, Mr. Meatball, someone maybe got caught looking here on this big this big explosion to the upside. And if they're not careful, <laughs> they may get caught again. Uh, looks like someone coming in this morning, and first off, and I said, by the way, the Macy's was on our you know, most active. There's a lot of paper going up out there today. But these two big blocks really caught our eye. Uh, they also caught our eye of our friends over there in Orat's land. They run some scans themselves. They had Macy's as their second highest volume today versus the 20-day moving average. That's kind of how they determine unusual activity there. So they were at about 5x of a multiplier right now. They had 255,000, so about a quarter of a million contracts traded versus the normal 55,000. They also had a call to put ratio of 7.3, so obviously pretty call heavy. And that's what we saw there as well today. A lot of call action. In particular, what first caught our eye was a big block of 46,332 of the SEP 21s going up for a buck 40. Now, this was through the bid. The bid was a buck 41. They came in and crushed these bad boys below the bid for a 62 vol and a dollar 40 price level. Again, they got 46,000 off there. So not the worst thing that the trade threw a penny to get 46,000. That was a pretty surprisingly tight market, 141 at 143. But then again, a quarter of a million contracts are trading out there today. So I expect things to be pretty tight. Uh, we also saw, though, after that one, that alone might look like, okay, someone's just doing an aggressive overwrite. But right before it, again, not Mark spread, but one of these ones where if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, chances are it's probably a duck. We saw about a minute earlier, we saw someone come in and gobble up the SEP 18s. So three strikes below, pick those up 19,000 times for $3.15, pretty much right off the offer there as well. If you're wondering, these are both about a 63 vol or so. So similar vol levels here. And so that happened a minute earlier. So Mr. Meatball, this has all the look of a bit of a, I wouldn't say panic, 
because they did more on the second leg. That's usually a sign that that's a house money roll. They're sitting on some they're sitting on some house money. They made some money on this. But if they had a covered call at the 18 handle today, they did not make money in Macy's today. They kind of got run over a bit. Uh, so they came back in. Looks like bought them back at the 18s. They didn't roll out, though, which is interesting. They kept it in the same expiration cycle. They just came back and blasted away at uh, not quite 3x, but pretty close to it, of the 21s, which are now a dollar and change in the money. So what are your thoughts on this? Let's call it panicky type ratio roll, sir. And what are your thoughts in general also on keeping it all in September and not giving yourself a little bit more time to breathe? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, you know, I'm, I'm wondering what exactly they were doing. But yeah, it does look like a ratio call spread. Uh, they were either covering the short. Let me look at the open interest there uh, in September. So it's opening on the on the 21s and not opening sure. on the 18s. Yeah. For sure, yeah. It looks like they were short the 18s. They sold them and then uh, or bought them and then sold out of the 21s. Yeah, the Macy's has made a nice move. They're down a little bit on that roll, but if they're long enough stock, it's not the end of the world. But yeah, Macy's is having a heck of a day, uh, completely blowing up earnings, doing really well. So uh, I am, uh, I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit flabbergasted that the earnings were that good. But when you read the report, they were that good. Has this one come across any of your gamma radars or your Robin Hood traders, sir? Yeah, we had seen Macy's, uh, you know, some of this volume over the last few days and weeks. We were actually long it in one of our other services called Sharp Bets. Uh, and we've been unloading our September 19 calls for the last uh, last couple hours at varying levels. So it's been been a nice day for us and um, the uh, Macy's. No, it's funny. You don't think of names that are hot with the tweens, the Robin Hood crowd. You don't think of Macy's. It doesn't leap to mind, right? But putting up some numbers today, nonetheless. So we, we shall come back to this one. It seems like someone uh, maybe got a little bit ahead of themselves with their strike selection and or keeping it in the same month. Because at this trajectory, these 21s are going to be in their face as well. And like I said, usually if it blows through your strike, you know, or at least hits your strike, I say you win in a covered call unless it really aggressively just blows the doors off and keeps going, in which case you probably left some money on the table. And that's what this person is probably thinking. That's probably maybe while they were trying to make it up on the second leg by really, really doing a ratio of those upside calls. But that may come back to bite them as well. You got to assume they have enough underlying to cover all this. So maybe they're willing to dump it off at 2240, which is their new break even price on this trade. But that's pretty much Almost exactly where it's trading right now, actually. So <laughs> we shall see. They may have that opportunity perhaps sooner than they intended. We'll keep an eye on this one. We'll come back to this one pretty soon because uh, that's an interesting one. We'll also see if earn or excuse me, earnings, if Macy's can keep up the Palooza that's going on out there. So interesting stuff afoot for Macy's again. You know, a name that was struggling for a while, talking about closing stores and things, and now here they are, up two hundred percent. Or close to it on the year here. Let's go on out now. Let's get some more weird names on the tape. I haven't talked about this one in a while. This is Bath and Body Works, ticker symbol BBWI, trading today $64.68, up about five and a quarter or nearly 9%. So a good day here for, for Bath and Body Works here. Let's check out the year that has been out there. This is a a similar trajectory to Macy's, uh, up 181% on the year. Year you go, could have bought all that you could have wanted for $22. And actually, it looks like about $23, almost exactly. Uh, and then they kind of were on a long, slow, and steady upward trajectory. By November, they were trading, looks like about $32. So not a bad clip. They got up to, looks like about 38 bucks in January. Then kind of gave it back really quickly, got back down to 30 bucks even January 27th. Then they turned right back around again and rallied again by February 8th, back up to 41. So kind of a brief blip, and that was kind of all she wrote for aggressive downside. The rest of the year has been mostly trending upside. By April, they were trading 53 bucks. They got up to, looks like, 57 bucks in June. I guess they had one more brief respite. They sold off back again to 50 and three quarters on June 17th, and then from there right back up. June 25th, trading 58 and a half. 
They got up to their 52-week high, looks like a few weeks ago on August 3rd, right around 66 and a quarter. Kind of gave it back up recently, back down to 59 and change until today when they came right back around again. It's seeing these interesting aggressive pops in names that you otherwise wouldn't associate with the Macy's Bath and Body Works. I mean, these aren't quite biotech level pops, but they are a little bit more aggressive than you would assume for these types of names and perhaps indicative of where we are in the market these days in the post GameStop era. But yeah, 64 and three quarters, 64.85 actually right now is where we find ourselves. So a nice day here for Bath and Body Works. Let's see what our Eye of Sauron laid its gaze upon out here today. Looks like a similar trajectory, Mr. Meatball, to our previous trade. We got some premium harvesting on the brain again today. This time it was the SEP 65. So now pretty much at the money calls. This morning, substantially out of the money. (laughs) Right now, right about pretty much at the money calls. Going up for $3.50. So they got some juice for these. This is a 45 volatility, if you're wondering, listening. Again, this is immediately after the earnings, so they came in to try to capture some of that post-earnings juice before it evaporates, and they got a good chunk of it, three and a half bucks here. They actually got them a dime better than the bid, so they didn't have to hit the bid to get 5,624 done, so that's also impressive. The stock was actually a little bit higher than it is right now, 65.31, so these are probably looking, I'm going to guess, a little bit better right now with the stock a little bit lower and let's see then they decided they came in they liked it so much they wanted to do more so a total of twelve thousand had traded on the day when we kicked off the segment maybe more have gone up uh, since then so a pretty active overriding day mr meatball this next one here in your other favorite name bath and body works what do you think about someone coming in and blasting away on twelve thousand of what are effectively at the money calls now sir uh, yeah. And, you know, I'm interested in that there was open interest of about that amount on the SEP 60 calls going into today. So, um, you know, could be somebody who was long turning this into a call spread, uh, you know, could be uh, any host of ideas. But uh, that that kind of pops at me when I'm looking at this trade as a whole. And, uh, you know, I'm wondering whether that's related to what's already open because this th- does not trade very much. This is uh, definitely a rarity to see it, it, it up like this and moving around. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm wondering whether they just they took a winner of a call and converted it to a spread. Quite possible. We shall keep an eye on this one as well as we keep on rolling into our final name. You guys like a little bit of premium buying on days like this, too. So. See if we can find your one. Let's get weird. Let's go back out to, to Argentina. Buenos Aires in particular for everyone's favorite. Grupo Financiero Galicia. <laughs> this is obviously an ADR. This is a financial services holding company out of Buenos Aires. Trading today eight and a quarter, up about a dime or so today. On the year, let's see. What do we got going here? A year ago, if my, there we go. A year ago, it was trading a little bit north of where it is right now. $10.37 had a pretty aggressive sell-off. By October, it got down to its 52-week low of 586 and then pretty much bounced right back by, let's see, November 10th, it was trading 880 again, so already north of where it is again. Then it kind of vacillated around that level for a while and then sold off again by March, was trading 719 again and kind of bounced on that level for a while. Then it started having an aggressive upswing again in May. On May 3rd, it was trading 732. And by, let's see, May 20th, was trading 855. And by June 10th, it was trading pretty much almost 11 bucks, a 52 week high of $10.92. And it held that ever so briefly, then sold off right back again. By July 8th, it was trading $8.13 again and has been bouncing around in this range pretty much ever since. So. Another one, kind of a topsy-turvy year out here for everyone's favorite ticker, GGAL. <laughs> Let's see what our Eye of Sauron found out here. And again, you folks like a little bit of your swinging for your fences trades. This one, not the craziest, not the worst either. Let's see, we've got the SEP 10s. Well, that's that's pretty far out there, though. <laughs> SEP 10 handle. This stock has not shown an ability to maintain those levels for very long. But someone coming in. Scooping up 4,924 of the SEP 10s 
Uh, they're not playing around. They just lifted the offer for 15 cents. Uh, again, almost 5,000 times. This is about a 70 vol, if you are wondering. Of course, there is a bright spot in this. There are earnings on the 25th. So this thing has shown an ability to pop. So if something's going to drive it, it could be earnings. So there are some earnings baked into this cycle. Uh, Mr. Meatball, what say you on this one? This is kind of your textbook earnings-related upside call flyer. Someone swinging for the fences 5,000 times in GGAL, sir. I think you've got hit the nail on the head. This is looks like just an outright call buy, and they're thinking the stock could uh, blow higher. Is this one on your gamma radar, sir? This is not on my gamma radar, but I may have to add it. it does seem gamma radar e to coin a it phrase. Does, so it? Uh, we'll keep an eye on this one. We shall certainly keep an eye on it. See how our eye of Sauron performs as we keep on rolling. It's time to turn our gaze to you folks out there. It is time for the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. All right, everybody, welcome to the mail block. A lot of ways you folks can play along with this. Of course, if you're listening live in the Secret Club, you can chime in live there. You can also use the members' hotline. If you're listening after the fact, social media at options, questions at the optionsinsider.com. Also works if you're hanging out there at options. You can also play along in our fun questions of the week. This week's question. Everyone's got vol on the brain these days, even more so now than when we posted this poll on Monday. (laughs) Which product holds the vol crown? Quite simply, which of these has the highest 30-day at-the-money volatility? No cheating. No digging it up on your brokerage platform. Just, Just use your gut. What does your heart of hearts tell you? We gave you four choices. Bitcoin. We gave you VIX or volatility itself. I know that's a bit meta for some of you, but uh, think about it. Crude oil or another name that's synonymous with <laughs> with volatility. That is Tesla. Let's go back out to the uncle list of mics. We'll start with you. If you have a vote, sir, have at it. And B, more importantly, where do you think our audience is lining up, sir? I'm going to say VIX and VIX. Without looking, I didn't cheat. I'm an honorable person when it comes to such things. So I'm going VIX and VIX. Interesting. VIX and VIX. A double VIX for Uncle Mike. A rear double VIX day for him. He's not really a huge VIX guy. So it must take a lot for him to go that way. Mr. Meatball, same question for you, sir. What are you feeling? And more importantly, what do you think our audience is feeling? Um, I'm going to, you know, what are my options? VIX, what else? VIX, Bitcoin, crude oil, and Tesla. Oh, I'm going to go, for me, VIX, uh, for the audience, Tesla. Interesting. Interesting. I'll tell you how it's breaking down right now. And there is a clear winner from our audience's perspective. And it ain't VIX. And it ain't Tesla. It's Bitcoin. 53.2% of you saying Bitcoin is the highest vol leader. Bitcoin wears the vol crown, followed by 22.6% of you saying VIX. 16.1% of you saying Tesla. And no joy for crude oil, only 8.1%. You got about 24 hours left in this one, listeners. So if you haven't played yet, get on over to at options. Make your voice heard out there if you think you know the real answer out there. Or maybe you agree with this. Uh, either way, hit it up. Get your voice in there. We shall reveal the actual answer and indeed the winner on Monday's Option Block program. What's going out to the live uh, secret chat here? <laughs> A lot of chatting back and forth, people. Very, very nice, cordial group we got in there. You guys are all very polite. Uh, and uh, Options Queen, Mr. Meatball, Options Queen, she of our crystal ball infamy on the on ball views, uh, as my chat screen just goes dark on me. There we go. All right. Uh, she wants to know, Mark, if you will sell her your house in Austin. What do you think? You up for a bit of a move again? Uh, she A quarter, quarter million above list, sure. Now, what if she offers to trade you her crystal ball machine? Because it's been pretty precise of late, sir. Uh, you know, then I might have to think about it. Maybe I could, ju- maybe I could uh, bring that into Carmen line and and use her crystal ball to make my uh, my ball decision. I mean, she was like within like point oh one, like three weeks in a row, or something ridiculous. So whatever she's using for her crystal ball, that might be a worthwhile trade. I, maybe I wouldn't be too hasty if I were you to back that one. I'm so op- options queen wants to join the the masses heading down south. Interesting. I don't know where home is for you. Maybe you're near Austin already. We got a comment here from Big Todd. I like that handle. Big Todd. 
He says, this week just goes to show how difficult it is to trade Vic's upside. I had some calls in my back pocket and was waiting for the big move. Uh, we didn't really get the spike we needed on any of the sell-offs. So when we finally got another pop on Tuesday morning before expiration, I headed for the exits only to have the follow through come in a few hours later and carry Bix to even higher levels. Uh, finding the right exit point on this stuff can be tricky. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. I think a lot of people felt your pain end of last week, beginning of this week. I had some, you know, vestigial Bix upside. Once in a while, I have some of that stuff in there when it seems like other, other shoes are about to drop and lurking. And you're right. It was a challenge because you didn't really get what you wanted at the end of the week. You, you had the bit of the sell off, bit of the pop on monday but as we've said many times it was very short-lived and it happened again you're right on tuesday morning and that one that one was also very short-lived and it seemed like as always happens the worm was turning yet again the market was starting to rally ball was starting to come in we've seen that that record play out how many times before and then the worm ended up turning and we got what as you put it the follow-through the the movement people had been waiting for for a while in the second half of the day which as I said at the top of the show, it was actually very late. We don't usually counsel you to, to hold your VIX premium all the way through to almost the close of, of expiration, but that's kind of what you had to do this time to really, to really get maximum bang for your buck if you had that upside you were talking about. So uh, intriguing stuff. Mr. Meatball, what are your thoughts on, on what Todd has to say? And, and in general, the challenges of, of having any upside in VIX land and being able to get it out at the right time. Yeah, really annoying, right? It decides to completely blow out immediately following uh, its own expiration. I was long some 20 calls that would have absolutely cleaned up if uh, expiration was a normal Friday. And instead, they go out completely worthless, only to have VIX completely blow up that afternoon. Um, VIX can be very difficult, very tough, um, which is why you have to be very strategic and really thoughtful in how you manage a VIX book, uh, you know, and, and you have to be willing to take profits. Uh, and if you don't, you're going to get your lunch handed to you. Yeah, this was a week definitely where I think if, uh, if VIX was on Friday, there would have been a lot of people <laughs> with a lot of smiles on their faces this week. Say la vie, that is the beast. That is VIX there, Big Todd. I'm, I'm sad to hear that you are discovering that. But again, Welcome to the wonderful world of trading volatility. You're going to get those. And 99% of the time, you're probably going to be right. It is. I mean, how many times have we lamented it, even on this show, that the vol pop you get is it lasts for minutes, not even hours. So sometimes you really do have to get the heck out of Dodge quickly. And then once in a blue moon, you get the second level of follow through that we saw on Tuesday going into expiration. All bets are off. Uh, that's kind of what we had this week. <laughs> This is a weird one from one of our other one of our other secret club members, Mackenzie. She says, <laughs> "If you guys ever traded drunk, and she she explains herself, she includes a link. It's not out of the blue completely. I could see when I first read it. She includes a link to a story. It looks like this is from Market Watch. Apparently, some firm decided to survey people on if they've traded." While under the influence, <laughs> I don't know why this, uh, it was Magnify Money, some, some website I've never heard of. Uh, they surveyed, looks like 1,116 what they call U.S. consumers. Does that mean they're traders as well? I don't know. They did it in June of this year, and then they broke down their responses by generation. <laughs> and here's what they found. According to this new survey, 32% of U.S. investors Say they have made trades while drunk. That's saying a lot more because for U.S. investors, obviously, you know, most of our markets close around the uh, 3 p.m. level here. Of course, here, a little bit more in the East Coast. So you're getting drunk pretty early if that's the case, <laughs> unless you're putting in maybe some, you know, after hours orders for the next session or something like that. So maybe a third of you have a day drinking problem, which is interesting. They also say Gen Zers are kind of feeding into that stereotype of all, all these crazy tweens on tiktok out there right you know they're they're crazy they're on something when they're trading and buying gamestop at 500 hoping it's going to a thousand well this this survey may back that up a little bit gen zers fall into that trap most of any generation with 59 percent confessing to trading while drunk <laughs> only nine percent of baby boomers admitted to this 
Uh, and they also added what they termed emotionally charged. I think that could pretty much easily qualify with most people, I would think. Uh, for people making trades, they say they would later regret. Uh, per that survey, two-thirds of Americans admit to making these what they term impulsive investing decisions. So there you go. If people aren't super high-strung and emotionally charged, they're drunk while trading. Uncle Mike, I know this is a problem you have wrestled with. You're frequently at your keyboard while inebriated. Inebriate, easy me to say. I'm, clearly, I'm drunk right now. What do you have to say for this survey, sir? <laughs> you know what? When I wake up in the morning, I just do a cup, put a little bit of scotch in my coffee, and uh, it's just kind of our little secret. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I don't drink coffee. Um, well, nor do I drink scotch. But uh, uh, I don't think I've been drunk in over 20 years. Um, I'll drink an occasional beer now and then, but uh, I've been trading for a shorter period of time than the last time from which I've been drunk. So I can't say I've ever traded while being drunk. Yeah, Mackenzie, I can I can honestly say that is not my go to. But I can say back on my trading floor days, I stood next to more than a few people who would qualify for most of these descriptions here. <laughs> Let's just say uh, that was not exactly conducive to healthy living down there so if those guys came down they weren't in some sort of altered state it was actually a bit of a rarity so uh, more common than perhaps you might think and just has switched a little bit these days and (laughs) all sorts of other fun stuff as we keep on rolling into our final segment it is time to go around the block It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on for the rest of this week into the weekend. It's like Options Queen saying, hey, my VIX machine doesn't seem to be working this week higher than I thought it would be right now. So maybe, Mr. Meatball, you might want to factor that into your asking price for your house. Maybe the the, the VIX crystal ball for Options Queen has taken a bit of a hiatus out there, but what are you keeping an eye on for the rest of this week while you're figuring out how much you want to dump your house for to options queen, sir? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think the way the day ends today is going to be really important. And what does Friday look like? Um, are they going to view this as kind of a dead cat bounce and toast it on Friday or are, is, uh, today the turning point for the market? Uh, I'm looking at the VIX. Is it going to stay above 20? Is it going to drop? Uh, and, uh, and precipitously, because uh, we do know how quickly vol can drop, uh, but we will uh, we'll see. Uh, it's, I'm really just kind of paying attention to how this market plays itself out uh, over the next day and a half, because that's going to lead into uh, really kind of the the tone for all of next week. Indeed, Uncle Mike, if you can put down the scotch for a second, uh, what is what is on your radar for the rest of this week into the weekend, sir? <laughs> Got it. Um, I actually do think we were at kind of a turning point today. The fact, the fact that the buyers came in uh, like they did earlier this morning to have such a violent move down and then such a violent move back up. I guess it wasn't violent, but uh, it, was, it was to where I would call significant, but not violent. And I'm pretty bullish along the those lines but you guys know me it's me it's me being bullish so i uh, take that with a grain of salt but i'm looking at that and then I, I think ultimately what we need is for the rest of the market to come in to make this thing rally the fact that uh, tech is kind of holding the brunt of everything right now and uh doing all the work uh just it's not gonna work the fact that we need energy to come in and do something uh with xle being down three percent on the day uh that's gonna have to do some work in here and do some of the lifting so i think that just uh, what i'm watching is just seeing if the other sectors will get on board with this uh rally and by rally meaning the movement that we've had uh since the the wee morning hours when i was thinking about sebastian as disturbing as that thought may be we have to leave you on it listeners but before we go Let's check back in with our compatriots. Mr. Uncle Mike, when you're not dreaming of Mr. Sebastian, <laughs> if folks want to reach out to you to discuss your day drinking or perhaps these markets, where should they go? What should they do? Maybe I should start drinking scotch. Who knows? No. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more about what I do, uh, feel free to visit my website, stcharleswealth.com, or follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusaw, T-O-S-A-W. 
I put out a lot of content and I would love for you to look at it. And Mr. Meatball, same question for you, sir. If folks want to reach out to you, check out the Gamma Radar, get in on this Macy's action. Where should they go? What should they do? Yeah, go to options.com and uh, check out my Bix Edge blog that I'm doing every day and check out everything else that is going on. Uh, you know, we're putting out great content on a daily basis. you got to come to optionpit.com and get on those email lists. Get on over to optionpit.com. And you don't have to go anywhere right now if you're in the secret club. Have a beverage, relax, we'll pump some fun stuff in the live chat. We'll be back in exactly 30 minutes with Dan the Man Gramza himself. You know he could hold court on a commodity and indeed futures options product or two. We got a few in store for you. I got a feeling probably going to be some energy on the docket today, given what we're seeing out there this week. Probably going to be some equities and volatility, certainly out there as well. I'll have to see what else is lighting up the movers and shakers. That's why you got to tune in every week. And of course, speaking of tuning in, we'll be back again tomorrow. Ball views noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern. Options oddities after that, 2 p.m. Central. 3 p.m. Eastern. Then we're back again on Monday. Another episode of the Option Block. See you there. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>